What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and in today's video we're going to be talking about how to create custom uh, fill patterns in Revit. So if you're anything like me you're probably getting annoyed when you don't have the accurate fill pattern or hatch for your Revit project that doesn't match your uh, flooring or your wall pattern or so on. So if you're if you're like me in this way this video is probably going to be for you because we're going to be exploring how to create your own customized Revit pattern and how to then reuse it in Revit for your projects. Uh, it's quite interesting and exciting and uh, that's what we're going to be exploring today. Now before I get into that I would just like to ask you to check out my website balkanarctic.com. The link is going to be just below the video. There I have uh, some uh, courses both beginner intermediate as well as advanced level courses. I take the extra time to explain everything in depth. There's over 95 hours of content, many different projects, Projects, and if you want to become a Revit expert, that's the place to be. And also, if you would like to get access to all of my Revit project files, I have many different files like this, these hatch patterns that we're going to be creating today and much, much more. All of that is available on my Patreon page. That's going to be the second link in the description just below the video. Also, make sure to subscribe, like and share this video. It helps me out a lot. And without any further ado, let's get straight into Revit. And here we are in a rabbit. So let's immediately get started by going here to models, uh, then going to new. And for the template file, I am just going to choose my own custom Balkan Architect template. You can use the architecture template if you want or whatever. If you're interested in my template, you can find that on my website, balkanarctic.com. Uh, the link to that will be in the description, of course. Uh, now let's just click OK and give Revit a few moments to start up. And as soon as we are ready, uh, let's get started creating our pattern. Uh, now, before uh, you do anything, you have to have an idea, of course, of what that pattern is going to look like. Uh, I already found an image of what that's going to look like, so I'm just going to be using that as reference. It's going to be like a combination of uh, circles and rectangles into one. I think it's going to look really cool. Uh, but once you have the general idea, you have to well, basically draw that in Revit. Uh, and now for drawing the pattern, what you will be using is here on the Annotate tab, we have the uh, detail lines, and this is what we're going to be using for uh, creating this pattern. So I'm just going to click there on detail lines, and then what they like to do first is basically uh, create a rectangle inside of which we're going to be creating the repeating element for our pattern. Of course, we're just going to create one element and then that's going to be repeated infinite number of times to create the pattern. Uh, but first let's create kind of the outline for that and for that I'm just going to go here to the rectangle tool, zoom in a little bit, click once and then let's make this one one by one meter. It's going to be a fairly large pattern just like this. Zoom in a little bit, hit the escape key a couple of times and then what they like to do is to select it and go here to line style and change that to something like this. Uh, for example, here I have these orange dashed lines that look like that. I'm just going to keep the, uh, the thin lines turned on. Uh, and this is basically just going to give us an outline. And then for the rest of the pattern or for the actual pattern, uh, we can use uh, just regular thin lines or medium lines to create that. Okay, so now once we have the, the line style selected and we have the draw tool selected, in this case let's go with just regular lines, I'm going to go here to the center, find the, or actually the midpoint of this top line, go straight down like that, then go to this side, go straight horizontally like this, and then I'm going to switch to circle and make one circle in the middle, 0.2 uh, meters, and then do the same thing here. So uh, this is what the pattern is going to look like. It's going to have a circle in each corner and then a circle in the middle. Uh, well, that's just going to be one segment of the pattern. Uh, now, because for this pattern, I just don't want to use simple lines. I actually want them to have some thickness or width to them. I have to double these lines. So to do that, you can go here to the detail line and then use the, uh, the pick lines. And here you have to give it an offset. In this case, that's going to be point. 0, 0.02 offset and then that's going to allow me to do something like this. Same thing here. Uh, now for these lines, because I have to duplicate them on both sides, I'm going to dro just drop this down to 0.01 and then do that. Click, 
click, click, click. Perfect. Uh, and then you can also do that here as well. And notice that if you use pick lines, it's actually going to use the line style uh, and not the actual line that you pick. So even though we've picked this orange line, the line that we have created is a regular uh, black thin line. Okay, uh, moving forward, we can zoom in and get rid of these two like center ones. Just hit delete. There we go. And then we can start creating our whole uh, pattern. So uh, what we need to do next is uh, go here to the Modify tab and go here into uh, Split Element Tool. SL is the shortcut. And you just want to go ahead and just make sure to break all of these here. And then also you want to break this circle on each side. Just, oops, okay, that worked. Perfect. Okay, this one I think I broke it too many times. Uh, so I, I can actually delete this segment and then I have to just use split lines like that. Okay, perfect. Uh, actually, we didn't really have to split the inner one, but that's okay, it doesn't really matter. Anyways, now we're going to switch to trim and extend to corner. TR is the shortcut for that. And then when you select that, you just go like this. There we go. Yeah, as you can see, we only needed the the middle one or the outside one but that's okay okay perfect and then actually i don't like the fact that this is now out of four segments so let me just repeat that by going here to annotate detail line circle find the center and then point two perfect okay uh, moving forward let's fix these up as well so again you want to go to the modify tab uh, then to the split element tool uh, split this here and here hit the escape key a couple of times and then uh, what you want to do next is just use trim and extend to corner just like that and then for this one uh, we have to split that one uh, or kind of to fix, uh, fix up that one as well but to this side so perhaps we can go like that I think there we go so we use these lines <laughs> to our advantage uh, okay, moving forward, uh, also we have to fix it up here. So again, trim and extend to corner, fix it like that, and like this here, perfect. And then you just want to drop these down a little bit, so this one and this one. And next I can just select this whole segment like this, hold the control key to add this one to selection as well, and then you can just mirror it to this side. So you want to go here to mirror and then draw axis, so DM is the shortcut for that find the kind of the top quadrant, pull it down vertically, and then you get it here. Uh, then you can select that one, hold the control key, select this and this line as well. And then again, so uh, mirror, draw access, find the kind of the, the quadrant, pull it down, and there we go. This now looks perfect. And then uh, what I like to do uh, also is to just to get rid of this part. We don't really need these orange lines. Well, at least not like that. And then I like to test this out before I turn it into a pattern. So you can just go here to copy, copy it once here, and then you can select it. Go to copy again, but you can select multiple, and then you can copy it like one meter, one one there we go let's try going down so just one enter one enter and so on so as you can see this is now turning into an actual pattern so this definitely works so i'm quite happy with the way that this turned out uh, now of course in order to turn this into a pattern because now it's just 2d geometry uh we have to uh we have to well use a tool for that uh, now unfortunately revit doesn't have a native a tool for uh, something like this. So we actually have to install an additional plugin, uh, which of course nobody likes to do, but well, sometimes for something like this, you have to. Uh, so the plugin that I'm going to be using uh, is going to be the Pi Rabbit plugin. It's actually quite a popular plugin. It has a lot of useful features, as you can see, uh, but the main one that we're going to be using is the Make Pattern one. Uh, now here you have a detailed explanation, but of course we're going to be just showing you that so you don't have to read it because nobody likes to read, everybody likes to watch videos. Uh, okay, uh, so how do you turn this into patterns? So uh, just before we start using the tool, we need to mark out the 
corners of this so the uh, one corner here and one here so kind of diagonally and you can do that by going here to annotate uh, detail lines and then just find kind of the, the center of the circle and go like that and do the same thing so center of the circle and go like that so we just have this kind of uh, edge of the line or point of the line uh, marking out the corner of this uh, rectangle inside of which our pattern element is located. Uh, moving forward, let's go uh, here and just select the pattern, but not the lines. So just the kind of the pattern element. Uh, go to PyRabbit, and then here, uh, what you want to do is uh, go to Make Pattern, click, and that's going to bring up this tool. Uh, now here you can name the pattern. So let's just call it the BA Balkan Architect Test Pattern. And then, uh, yeah, that's pretty uh, much it. Uh, so here you just have to select, do you want this one to be detailed pattern or model pattern? Uh, the main difference is, well, detailed patterns are something that you're going to use for like wall sections, things like that, things that just represent the uh, the pattern on your, uh, uh, on your model in like floor plan sections and so on. And then model pattern is something that's well used on a model. So even on like 3D surfaces or something like that, that, and that one is just going to be the same size no matter the scale and this one is always going to be kind of proportioned to scale so if you switch to this uh, uh, you want to keep the scale and this one it's just always going to be the same uh, so that's just the kind of the main difference and I actually want this one to be model pattern so let's keep it at that click here to create pattern and uh, now it says pick the origin point bottom uh, left corner uh, of the pattern area so uh, so we have to go from the uh, origin point from here and then to here and it's going to say that the uh, Balkan architect test pattern uh, captured create uh, cr uh, created and updated so I'm just going to click OK and we're done. And if you would like to, to get this plugin, uh, you can actually find it in the in the description of this video. I'm going to include a, a link to that so you can just download it and install it. It's completely free and you might find some, uh, uh, some other useful functions there. Uh, but anyways, now once we have this, let's go back. Uh, go to the maybe wall command. Let's use the basic 400 millimeter generic wall. Uh, place it here at the escape key a couple of times, select that wall, let's go to the 3D view, give it a few moments, there we go, so we have our wall. Uh, now important thing, you have to switch here from uh, realistic to hidden line to see the pattern, and then of course we have to apply the pattern as well, that makes sense. Uh, so to apply the pattern you go here into edit type, you go into structure, into edit, uh, go to the material, edit that, and here we can pick out some material. So let's go with, I don't know, let's search for some tile. Now let's go with ceramic tile or something like that. And here for the foreground surface pattern, as you can see here, it's just squares. Uh, but let's say we have a more interesting tile. So let's select that. And here, uh, as you remember, we saved this as a model pattern. So make sure that the model is checked here. Uh, drafting means that that's a uh, that's the the other type of pattern. So here we want the model pattern, and then here you can search for it. And here we go, Balkan Architect Test Pattern, which is really cool. Click OK, and there it is. Uh, here you can specify the color. So if you don't want it to be black, maybe. I don't know, gray or green, that's okay. Uh, and as you can see, the pattern will then be green. And if I just hit apply and okay, and okay, and apply, there we go. Now we have a green pattern on our wall, which looks really, really cool. Uh, now, if I go to, let's try this south elevation. And then here, uh, we should be able to measure this pattern. So it's, yeah, as you can see, it's one meter uh, kind of one meter tiles, so to speak. Uh, now you can change the scaling of this pattern just by selecting that wall, going to edit type, going to structure, go back here into material, uh, go here into pattern. Uh, if you select this, you have the edit a fill pattern option uh, and here you can change the import scale. So you can change it from one to 0.5 and that's just going to make it half as large. So if I just hit okay, okay, 
apply. Okay, so as you can see, it's the same pattern, just multiplied a few more more times. So now if I go here to south elevation, I can just use the measure tool. And if I measure from one side to the other, now it's kind of a half meter tile. Uh, so feel free to play around with your patterns when you create them. Maybe they're, they, they are too large or too small, but you can kind of play around and set them up the way that you want. Uh, but anyways, that's how you can create these really cool patterns in Revit. It's fairly simple and straightforward, yet in the end you have a uh, very impressive result. Uh, so tell me please in the comment section below, uh, have you enjoyed this video? Uh, did you find it fun and interesting and uh, are, you, are you planning on using this in the future? Also if you would like some of my in-depth courses, I have both beginner, intermediate as well as advanced level courses on my website uh, balkanarctic.com so make sure to check that out and also if you would like my project files like this file here with this really cool pattern, uh, you can find that on my Patreon page that is going to be the second link in the description. Okay so that's pretty much it for this video, thank you for watching, make sure to subscribe subscribe, like and share this video and I'll be back in a couple of days. Have a nice day.